Hello truckers, welcome back to American Truck Simulator. We are sitting at a rest area in Missoula, Montana. 8 o'clock at night, you know what that means? Let's time to go to bed. 34179 the bank account. Any of our drivers going to complete a delivery overnight? We're about to find out as we wake up at 6 a.m. And hopefully we can find ourselves a good load. There's 15, 14 for some money coming in. Uh, she is leveled up. So I think if I remember, that was Mimi that just leveled up. If I remember correctly, oh, another uh, 2,425. Uh, Mimi, we're waiting for her to level up because I think uh, she'll now have four points into long distance hauling. Yes, she does. Let's go ahead and put her on balanced. Not like she was going to level up again today, but, you know, just get it done just in case I forget by the end of the episode. But since we're in here, we got to find ourselves a job because we came to Missoula, got done early on our clock hour, just didn't have nothing that we were looking for. So let's go ahead to the freight market. We're trying to get our way up to Canada. We're not far from there. So let's go ahead and click on Missoula, see what we got going up there. Well, there's one that spoke. Oh, no, 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 no. These are all too heavy. Um, the Kenworth trucks we possibly could, but that's to Mississippi. Here's one to Idaho, but that's a lot of weight. Uh, Arizona. Well, there's something to Colville, Washington. I mean, it's kind of on the way. Anything going to the BC, the British Columbia. British Columbia, British Columbia. Absolutely nothing going on up there. So let's go ahead and we'll take this one because not only is it fragile, it's also high value cargo. Um, $3 per mile. I mean, we're not, we don't have to go too far to get to this town anyways. And then see if we can find something there that'll bring us on up to uh, the British Columbia. Uh, I gotta go to Costco to get this. Let's go ahead and set the GPS. We have a full tank of fuel. So we're, we're set on that front. Uh, let me go ahead and do the parking brake and we'll do this. And I think we're all set to roll. So on out we go. Like I said, we got a full tank of fuel, so we're good to go. We should go kind of slow through here. That'd be the wise thing to do. I don't know, trying to sleep next to that scrapyard. Um, you know, it wasn't the best, but it was fine. Any traffic coming? I don't see no traffic coming. Nice place for a bush there. Alright, so how far do we got? Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at the mileage you got to go to get to this load. Alright, I mean, it's only 31 miles. We'll get there. Bob tailing it for 31 miles to get our load. Then we're going to wherever it is we're going to in Washington. I forgot the name of the town already. I forgot the name of the town already. Let's go ahead and set the GPS here. Now let's go ahead and shift as well because well let's, 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 let's hit the brakes first because green light. Gotta get to the brakes in this game now. I've been playing Trader Life Simulator and the brakes in that game I suck. So I don't have to brake as early as I thought I should. So on our way to get our load, uh, yeah, so we're still kind of slowly working away to get enough cash to hopefully someday buy ourselves or upgrade to a better, better truck. Not that there's anything wrong with this one here, but a little bit more horsepower, maybe a longer chassis and a bigger fuel tank. Not that the fuel tank's been a hindrance at all to us anymore because we gas up, we fuel up every day, we're fine. We get to where we need to go, gas up, go to bed, wake up, rinse, lather, repeat, and uh, off we go. So we're sitting just shy of 40000 today. Um, hopefully, I don't think uh, we're going to get many deliveries. What did we get, like two? Or is it three deliveries last night? Uh, either way, what it was, um, from what I remember, when we were checking our drivers last night, not many of our drivers are going to complete deliveries today, so I think we probably got all of what we're going to get. I do not see a Costco down the road, but I'm pretty sure it's down there. GPS wouldn't lie to us, would it? Wish I could see the the light outside. The green light. The stoplight. I have to move my microphone just a little bit. There we go. 
That's a long light. On up and around, and let's go get this load. What am I even taking? Do I? <laughs> I just clicked on it. Oh, I didn't care. I was, I was just looking for something in that general direction. That was about the only thing in that general direction. Was it a forklift? May have been a forklift or something. We'll see when we get to Costco. What they have for us. What's the speed of it? 35 through here. I mean, maybe we can get to Canada today. Maybe. It's a slight possibility. Use cars? Nope. That's something that's not in the game is use trucks. But then again, if you're not playing with, if you're playing the base game and not have realistic economy on, uh, use trucks? Why would you need to? You can make so much money so, so fast. You don't really need it. Uh, don't you love this? You come to a stoplight, you sit there, and you look around, and there's, okay, I saw a car. There's a car coming. Wait, where did that car go? Wasn't there a car coming down that road? Did it go through and I did not see it? Did it disappear? So, this is where we made a delivery... <laughs> Last night, I said, no, my luck will be coming right back here. And, yep, here we are. All right, freight market. And what do I have set for us to take? Because I wasn't looking. Uh, it is forklifts. Colville. Colville. Why, why are these high value? They're forklifts. I mean, I'm not trying to put down forklifts at all, but... It's forklifts. Whatever. Maybe I, maybe maybe it's the customer that says they're high value cargo. Either way, let's go ahead and hitch it on up. My track IR is not acting up right. Well, it's acting up for sure. Oh, no, come on. Why is my track IR doing that? Let me see if I reset it here. Maybe that'll do it. That was uh, not nice and smooth. There we go. That's the way it should be hooked up. I don't think I added any damage to the truck, but I know it showed up as 34%. It was so minor. All right, let me just get on out here just a little bit. And we'll park it right here for a second, put it in neutral. Let's go ahead and check out the route that we have going here. Anything that I need to go ahead and check along the way. I mean, I'm going past anything kind of close where I should, you know, jump off and and check it. Um, all right, so might be going right past the dealership there. And then when we get into Colville, uh, absolutely nothing. So hopefully we can get something to Colville and going on up to the British Columbia. It's a possibility. So nothing to change on the route. Uh, parking brake there, peanut. There you go. Nothing to change on the route. So we'll see when we get there. Where else can we go today? Hopefully we can find a load up to the BC. First, let's get the heck out of here. It looks like we're going down this road. Come to a complete full stop, just like that, and we're all set to go. Yeah, if you remember at uh, the end of the last episode, we came right past this RV park. Just 222 miles to Colville. So just a hop, skip, and a jump, and we're there. Go ahead and get right into the correct lane that we need to be in. And 
and we'll jump on the interstate. I don't know what interstate this is going to be. Are we still at the I-90? Is that where we're at? I didn't check the weight of my trailer like I always do. And okay, we're still at the I-90. Well, this guy's going to go slow up the hill. You can just tell. Uh, it's just 17 and a half thousand pounds. So we should be able to accelerate relatively with ease. Give this guy a little bit of room because sometimes they will stop when they're entering an interstate if there's traffic coming. Unlike me, I'll just kind of force, forcefully merge my way onto traffic. Waiting for this car to kind of go past us because, well, he's up in that lane. I didn't quite see if I was taking this interstate all the way to Colville, but I don't think I will be. So I will have to be aware. Oh, there is actually a delivery coming in. It'll briefly get us over $40,000 because, as we know, in about four hours' time, I got that $3,000 payment towards the loans. I would like to get back in that lane because I never know. Because, like I said, it didn't look too hard at the GPS to see where we're getting off I-90. But I'm pretty sure somewhere through here we, we shall be. Tells you about AI traffic. I haven't been doing four miles an hour over the speed limit, and that trucker's probably doing three miles an hour over the speed limit. Slowly merge on over. I think I got plenty of room, but just want to make sure. I just want to make sure that he knows my intentions. So we'll get to Colville, we'll drop off these forklifts, and, and fingers crossed. We'll find a nice little route going on up to the BC. If not, we'll stick around the northwest area and hopefully find something at some point that can get us back up into Canada. And once we're up to Canada, we're going to try to roam around a little bit more than we did last time rather than drop off, take a load, and head on out. But like I said, last time we did it, I think we were driving for someone else, so we didn't have that many options. Plus, we were trying to earn money and level up to get our own truck. And uh, now here we are. Way station up ahead. And we are stopping. So I wonder what they're going to say today about my truck and the fine condition that it's in. Uh, oh, the way station is on this side. Ooh, that's... Okay. Um, was not quite prepared for that. So we are at 34% damage on the truck, and I think 32% of it's probably tire wear. Alright, uh, your vehicle's not perfect in technical state, but be more careful next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so far, so good. Not really like merging out into the left lane, but whatever works, I guess. Trying to get my way back over, but squeezing my way in between that truck and this truck. I think um, I kind of cut him off a little bit. That's why I backed off. Same color truck. I wonder if they were they're working for the same company. I wonder if they were I wonder if they had a little bit of a convoy going on there. A lot of zigzagging here. And the trucks are really slowing up in the zigzag area. Not me. Hammer down. All right, we should be getting back on to the base game map, the SES map. We should be in Idaho somewhere around through here. Let me get back.
back over into this lane here going uphill because I'm going to lose some speed, I would think. Not a whole lot because, like I said, we only got 17,500 pounds behind us. It looks like another beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest. I, I don't think it's ever going to rain again. I don't, I, looking at the sky, it, it's like perfectly blue sky here. And now we're, now we're in Idaho. Well, that's a sharp corner. So, yeah, 34% damage on the truck, as far as the game's concerned. And we still passed the inspection at the weigh station. I don't know, I, like I said, throw a number out there, maybe 40% before you get a fine. We're going to keep going until we do, or unless I trade the truck in before that. And you can tell we're all going, we're going downhill completely. Just coasting on down. And already we only got 100 miles left to go to Colville. A quick turn and burn is what we hope to do. So we're getting a little bit closer to where maybe we can trade in this truck. And I am thinking if I were to repair this truck, you know, we get more of a value for it than when we last looked. Uh, this truck was worth a trading value like 95000 And we did pay like 130000 for it, maybe? Does that seem right? Like 130000 I think so. Somewhere around there. But then again, we were getting a trade in value when the truck was probably like at what, 25% damage on it? 22, 25, somewhere around there. And when we look at the Western Stars, the cost of the truck that we kind of threw together quickly was like 155, 160,000, somewhere in that general area. So we're getting closer to be able to trade up. Also, when I trade up, I don't want to leave ourselves really short on cash either. I don't want to do that. I mean, I would like to get another garage and start getting more drivers, but... Um, yeah, it's time to trade trucks because we've been in this truck now for quite a while. I just want to change up the look for it for you guys so it looks a little bit different. Am I getting off here? No, I'm not. zooming along a little bit too fast actually speed limits down to 65 I would get a ticket if I were to pass a cop or a cop were to catch me here what I would like to do is get back in that left lane or sort of the right lane because being only 70 miles out my exit's got to be coming up on the quick side I would think Hey, I can bypass this way station. And we'll quickly breeze through Idaho, Idaho, hopefully. I think we're actually we're in Washington now. I think I just saw the sign. The, the welcome sign to Washington was actually in the middle seems kind of odd, but uh, it is what it is. But I'm not sure what's going on with the weather. Like I said, the first like five or six episodes, we had rain almost every day. But now, I don't think it's rained since, and I haven't touched, I haven't touched at all the, the game options, the chance of rain that we could get. Um, I feel like I'm getting off here, which we are. Ninety-nine cent hamburgers. You know, I, I'm not sure. I, I pretty much want to buy a ninety-nine cent hamburger, unless they're minis. Whoa! 
you're stopping way back here, dude? Alright. I'm not going to get too close to that police car. Well, I didn't really swing out wide enough, I don't think. I'm right next to my trailer. might go over that curve, but... Oh, actually, I might hit, hit that lamp post. Light post. No, don't think so. Didn't feel like I did. Interesting little downtown route we got going here. Still got about, what, 50 miles to go here? I hear a train somewhere. I think fourth gear starting on a little bit of a hill might be a little bit too much for this truck that we got going here for the weight. We have to start leaving a stop point on a hill in third gear at 17,000 pounds. All right, 30 miles an hour, I will try to set the cruise for that. I think we're coming up on the truck dealership. You can see it on the right-hand side. And it looks like it's going to be a Volvo dealership. I think the Freightliner dealership is just trying to avoid us. Not that I'm looking to, to trade to a freight line, and to me it doesn't matter what truck we take next. I would just like to find one at some point just so we have all of them at our options. It's good to have options. It's like, why are those cars all going through when I have a green light? I don't know. So the question is going to be is, are we going to be able to find the load going up to the British Columbia, heading on up to Canada today? That, that's what, was what we're really looking for. Merge on over slowly. This so we got to merge over again. A little bit of a scenic route today, getting off the interstate for a change. Seems like we've been on a lot of interstates most of the day, most of the episode, so a little side route for you. I did not see, when we went past that Volvo dealership, did it say I discovered it, or not like it matters. We've already discovered a Volvo dealership, but I didn't see if it, uh, if it said I actually had discovered it. A little bit more scenic route, though, as uh, than going up through Wyoming and Montana. As we mentioned before, that Montana and Wyoming are part of the coast-to-coast -coast map. And sometimes, uh, like I said, the scenery and the sides, um, not really there. As for Wyoming, I will say, I don't know if they intended it to leave it that way, because Wyoming is kind of like that, to where there is no trees and, and such not in some areas. So I don't know if they left it that way because it's like that, or they just didn't... Uh, I don't think Wyoming was really um, done over on the coast-to-coast -coast map anyways. And don't expect them to do anything with it at this point, since Wyoming is the next state coming out for um, American Truck Simulator. I'm going to guess probably sometime in June. I have no idea, by the way, when I say that. I'm just purely speculating in June. That's what I'm going to guess. Because it's what? Almost like every three months now is when they come up with the state. Then after that it's going to be Texas. Yep. 
Yep, coming up to a rotary, or as other people like to call it, roundabouts. Just keep my focus a little bit here, make sure I get off at the right one. Looks like they want me to get up on this one here. Let's follow the truck in front of us, I guess. Now I can see our final destination for this load on the screen. It's going to be on the left-hand side, looks like. But we still got a ways to go, even though we're right here in town. Where am I going with this? Sierra Pacific. How about if I pick the correct gear? That would definitely help out. I don't know why I'm looking for the train. I would hope the uh, bars would come down if that's the case. Uh, where am I going with this? I mean, I can see it on the map, but where are we going? It's like somebody knocked over some telephone poles. Oh, I see it blinking now. Okay, I got you. I got you, I think, right? Yep, yeah, that's our spot right there. Well, maybe they need the forklifts to get these poles all back up on the piles. I think I cut it way too late. No, I didn't. All right, there we go. Not exactly the way I wanted to do it, but kind of. Uh, let's go ahead and decouple here. I wasn't as far as forward as I, as I thought I was. That's why I was cutting at a weird angle, but it's in there. Uh, level 16, uh, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and continue and, um, well, let's put the final point in a fragile, uh, because that way you don't have to hear me say it that anymore. Um, so that gives us a 5% higher reward, 1% increase from delivering a fragile cargo. Now that's always good. All right, so job market. All right, see if we got anything going on up to the British Columbia. There we go, but that's uh, 89,000 pounds. Idaho, Montana. There's a load to Washington. Well, we are in Washington. All right, let's hopefully we got something else. Uh, something to Seattle. Back to Bozeman, but uh, no thanks. Eureka. This is going up. Oh, it's the same. Yeah, so why would I take that? Oh, here we go. There we go. Um, eight hours, 20 minutes. Uh, what time is it? It is now third. I don't have that many hours left to my clock, and they are expecting it Friday morning, and it's Thursday we can do that. We can definitely do that. So I got 24 hours to get it there. It's an eight hour trip and I'm gonna sleep 10 and 13. Um, yeah, we, we should be able to do this no problem. So let's go ahead and grab that. Uh, looks like a lot of winding, windy roads. The problem may have, since we're not on an interstate in windy roads, is finding a place to pull off and, and uh, rest. Let me just go one more page just to see what else we got. No. No, no. All right, so let's go ahead and take this frozen veggies from Costco, which I think we just passed, on down over to Walmart. Uh, does this go around is the question. If not, well, then they can always turn around because I think it goes around. Yep, we're all set. So 
won't quite get to the BC today, but definitely next episode we shall. I don't see any stop signs at that uh, four, four way, so it's almost like uh, everyone for themselves, I guess. I wasn't even looking to see how much we're getting paid for this delivery, but it doesn't matter. I want to get up back up into Canada and drive around there for a bit. So the next couple episodes, maybe some uh, uh, quick uh, one hoppers, one day hoppers, whatever you want to call them. Then eventually, uh, wait, 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 wait. Did, I, did I go past caught? I got confused because it says UPS out here. Um, you want to open up this gate, please? Thank you. Probably should have my direction light on so people know I'm trying to come in here. It's confusing. The sign says UPS, but I see all Costco trailers in here. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Anything else pop up while we're... Uh, no, so we're taking it. So, yeah, we're going to Walmart in Surrey, British Columbia. Let's go ahead and take that job, please. See if I can back it in on my first try this time. The forklifts didn't go so well. I think I was going too fast on the forklifts. All right, put the parking brake on as we couple up because we're going to do what we always do. Am I in neutral? Yes, we are. Let's go ahead and check the map. So, yeah, quitting time is like almost five hours from now. So I got to find like a rest area. Oh, wow. Um... Yeah, so on this road, I mean, there is absolutely no rest area whatsoever. That is what I was kind of afraid of. And I'm sure, I'm sure by the time we get to here, uh, I'll mark it. What does this say? Six hours, 45 minutes. You know, it, it may have to do. I mean, I already got the route. I already got the load. Uh, so that's like seven hours. It's almost a couple hours past my, my clock time, but maybe we can make it up. I don't know. We shall see. Uh, so let's, uh, let's not hesitate. Let's get back right back on the road here. Wait for them to open up the gate. Just don't close the gate back on my truck. I will not be a happy trucker if you do that. Oh, and of course, we're going to be taking a windy road. And what pulls out in front of you is another truck with like a bulldozer on it. You know that trucker is going to go all the way through like we're going to go through. And he's going to go so flipping slow. It's going to drive me nuts. Especially when I want to make up a little bit of time, but we'll see what we do. Now, as for in-game driving hours in a day, we should be able to get to that rest area, no problem. But we're trying to go by the 11-hour clock that truckers actually do get. Not the 14 that ATS gives us. So I'm hoping this guy does not quite go the way we're going. Uh, so far... Oh wait, he's not going to go the way we're going? He's going back the way he just came. Well, maybe he needed to turn around and this was the best place for him to go. Don't be surprised if we do a little bit of a heavy foot through here. Meaning that we just go a little bit faster than the speed limit says. Just to try to make up that extra one hour. But 
definitely got to keep on my toes. We're not driving in an interstate, so I did see part of it. Don't worry, that's our loan. Um, I did see when I was looking at the GPS, part of this road is on the windy side, so yeah, probably going to have to slow down to maybe like 25, 30 going up or down some hills. This would be a good spot for probably, uh, no, I got to turn. <laughs> I wanted to take a thumbnail. Uh, yeah, I was trying to catch up to the front of the train, but yep, not paying close attention to the GPS. We're turning, so I guess there goes my thumbnail opportunity. Uh, I got to love it. Good part is I made my turn and I didn't hit nothing, so I'm happy there. If I kept going straight, I would have ran into one of those invisible walls because yeah, we're not allowed to go that way. Actually, a little surprised. I was actually thinking about the thumbnail once I saw the train. But it's something about trains. The second I see a train, it's like, oh, thumbnail. <laughs> Every other time, I'll just make the whole delivery, park it up, say goodbye to you guys, and then... Uh, exit the game and go, oh, you kind of forgot to kind of take like a thumbnail for it, yeah. Always happens for, to me in ATS. Sometimes even Farming Simulator do the same thing. I, I'm just happy to uh, have a complete episode ready to edit and then I'm like, oh, um, you didn't take a picture of anything. Alright, so the question is going to be is, can I get to that rest area at a decent hour? I mean, I got to make up, so it was like 11.30, it said six and a half hours, so in theory, if that uh, ETA is correct, I should get there. It's like, hopefully that's not a cop, because I was going a little bit too fast. Um, technically, I should get there at 6 p.m., which is one hour past our, of what our clock will allow us. So these corners aren't that bad. There's, there's sometimes you see on the GPS where the road snakes around like that, and sometimes you have to you have to bog down quite a bit. I'm not sure I've ever been through on this part of the map. When I say that, I do have three profiles. So I have my original single-player profile that when I was doing ATS videos. Uh, last year before I started doing this series. That's on our, my first single player profile. I have my multiplayer profile, which I have not been on uh, in a long time, but I don't think I've been through even on this part of the map. Uh, multiplayer. And now I got this profile as well. And the reason why I don't play multiplayer in this series here, um, well, you know, accidents do happen, and I'd be stopping at... <laughs> at a station all the time. I didn't know how it was going to go with realistic economy if I had to keep, you know, fixing my truck over and over and over again. And having the traffic, the AI traffic, the mixture of the AI traffic instead of just truck after truck. And sometimes the multiplayer on uh, ATS side of things, um, there's been times I went a whole hour, hour and a half, and I'll see another player. Especially when you're going to weird towns. Kind of driving through a cannon up through here. Did I say cannon or canyon? Canyon. <laughs> I don't want to be going through a cannon. And like always, when I roll like this, eventually you do catch up to another truck. And I'm pretty sure he's going to... He'll be doing like the five miles an hour under the speed limit kind of driving. Go right. Go right. Yes, he listened to me.
Now, something tells me I remember this kind of a thing where cops have like a truck pulled over. Well, we're only 300 miles from our destination. But obviously we're not going to get there because I only got another, in theory, three and a half hours left on our clock. So I'm hoping let's get to that rest area today. Uh, did that rest area, rest area have a gas station, a fuel station? I'm thinking it did. If it doesn't, not that big of a deal. We'll definitely get there on fuel, and we're not going to be too short on fuel, so I can find some place to fuel up tomorrow if need be. So once we gotten this far, we're pretty much driving to that rest area because there was nothing... I mean, there was nothing after we left, uh, left town way back there. So we're definitely going through... Yeah, I had been through this road because this road um, was already marked out saying on GPS that I've been here. Oop, turning here, I'll still be staring at the light. So I thought the light was going to turn red on me. It just stayed green for so long. I'm like, that light's going to turn, that light's going to turn. And meanwhile, a lot of you are probably at home are saying, you need to turn. You need to turn. <laughs> I was like, okay, I heard you. I'm going to slow down just a little bit here. Oh, 25, huh? How heavy is this load? 32. So I'll start in third gear. Yeah, only 25 miles an hour to this little town. So not too bad overall because we already made our, our loan payment. I was looking down. Yeah, we're just shy of 40000 I don't expect... Yeah, our drivers don't really work in the afternoon hours. They kind of work in the evenings, early morning hours. So I'm thinking after we upgrade our trade in the truck and upgrade to whatever we get, um, I think then it'll be time to start saving up for a garage. So the next truck we get will probably have that one for quite a while. The reason being, obviously, we got to save up enough cash to buy a garage, which is going to be like ninety thousand, and then of course we got to save enough cash to buy a truck. So we're going to need somewhere in the area of like two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in the bank account. So the next truck we have, like I said, we're going to have that for a while. Yeah, buying a garage is better for us. One, we'll get three truck garage slots. Instead of upgrading a, a garage to give us two more spots, which costs $100,000. So I need to double check on that, though. Maybe I'll send... Um, uh, the mod author of this realistic economy, which is Patrick. Maybe I'll send an email just asking him why upgrading the garage is a hundred thousand. Because usually buying the garage is in the base game is if I'm, it's been a while, but I do believe it's a hundred and eighty-eight thousand. Is a hundred eighty thousand or hundred eighty-eight? I think it's a hundred eighty thousand to buy a garage and a hundred thousand to upgrade it. So you would think since it's only like ninety thousand to buy a garage that it should be a little bit less to upgrade the garage in a realistic economy. I'll just have to double... Well, we can double check if I remember when we get to our rest area. 
I am just curious. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Let me just do a quick check on the map. We're on a straightaway here. So, next checkpoint is in three and a half hours. I haven't gained any time whatsoever. And there is no... there. I mean, there is no place to stop. So, I'm not gaining any time. Which is the way it is. But um, that's where we're going. Yeah, there is a fuel station there. So, so it looks like I'll be putting a little extra hours in today. Yeah, they made it kind of rough because I mean, the only thing I could have done was, uh, what was it, Colville? Was that the name of the town we were just in? I mean, I could have taken a load. I could have hitched onto the trailer, taken a load, and just went and rest, you know, rested the rest of the day and started fresh in the morning and then then try to get, no, nah, because I wouldn't have gotten to the destination in time. So, I, yeah, we wouldn't have been able to take this load at all. Oh well. And this is the thing. Oh, and, you know, in game we have a sleeper truck, so if we could find a place to pull over safely, just sleep in the back of the truck. All right. So this might be the part of the road I said snakes quite a bit, because you can see in the GPS um, just over on the other side of this hill. We should be heading back in the other direction. Just notice there's not even any traffic behind me either. Now see, there's cars pulled over there. Now, there's no way this truck and trailer would be able to pull over in that spot and, and sleep for the night. I mean, I probably could. I just have to make sure there's no cars parked there, because I'd be taking up everything. Is this a spot you want to take a thumbnail? Oh, let's go ahead and do so. Not as a majestic shot as I thought it was going to be, but it's a screenshot. So we'll know how close we are to the rest area by the closer the time of 6.30 we get. So I got about three more hours to go, it seems like. It's really hard to pick up time on a road like this though. I can see why there's no rest areas here because, well, we're pretty much on the side of a cliff. Doesn't show it on the GPS. Not sure I want to drive down there with a truck and trailer, but. Actually, would this be a nice little spot for a screenshot? Going over a bridge? Sure, why not, he says. Just got over the bridge, but there's a nice place to pull over and rest, if I could. Alright, that should be the last time I try to take a screenshot. That's about the only problem with trying to take a screenshot when you're trying to drive all the way through. No jump cuts, but... Oh well. Not like you guys probably know as much difference. I'm gonna, you know, by the time I cut it and edit in the video, it's just gonna be... <laughs> This is going to be like, click, click, and then and, and I'm through. For me, it was like about four or five minutes trying to get the camera in an angle that looked halfway decent. Oh, look, another bridge. Yeah, I was kidding.
Ah, I get to go through a tunnel, you know what that means. Gotta honk the horn. I always was told that was good luck, I have no idea. If it's good luck, then that means we'll get to a rest... Yeah, see, there's plenty of rest areas here I could have pulled over. That would have been a perfect one, because it's 4.30. Oh, it's one of these kind of bridges, huh? A see-through. I'm sure by now, most of you have probably have seen uh, the glass bridges that people can walk on, and the glass... Well, it kind of cracks, I guess. <laughs> And if you're not ready for it, oh uh, yeah, kind of interesting little little uh, design they have there to where the glass cracks, but it's not actually cracking. It's kind of weird. I have no idea how it works, but it's very interesting. And if you're afraid of heights, and you're walking across the glass bridge, and the, and the glass you're walking on, quote unquote, starts to crack. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you can see a lot of people hanging on to the rails for dear life. So about an hour and a half out to our rest area. And as we can see, as of right now, uh, I got about two and a half hours to my delivery. So when I sleep through the night, I wake up in the morning, it's just gonna be a quick, quick run to drop this off. But by then we should be in Canada and hopefully we can find more loads around Canada just to drive around for a bit. Just to re refresh my memory on this load here. Yeah, I got 18 hours to finish the delivery. So sleeping through the night is not going to hurt us at all. sure all the corners and stuff we've been going on that's the wrong button there peanut that's that's the map button we want this button here uh yeah no damage on the trailer which would be just tire wear and the cargo obviously is at zero percent truck is at 36 percent now or sorry 35 percent Probably in a few more episodes, I think we'll trade in this truck. Whether we have the cash or not, what we can do is we can trade in the truck. I may not get all the upgrades for the truck, but at least we'll get, we'll just, you know, we'll get whatever truck brand it is other than Volvo. And we'll make sure we get the chassis we want, the engine, and the transmission that we want. As for the accessories, I can add on later as we go. But I think it's time to trade in this truck. And apparently, to get to this rest area, I gotta go to the left. Come on, truck, the light's green. There we go. Make sure I get through it, because it was turning yellow when I went. But I was far enough through where I'm not gonna get a ticket for it. So we're not quite there yet, but it looks like I may have gained a little bit of time, because it's approaching 6 o'clock. So I'm a little bit over my clock. But that's what, you know, I can kind of say, well, I had a short day yesterday. Um, I don't think that'll fly, but. Just because I didn't drive my full day doesn't give me exception to drive over my 11 hours today. The other thing I don't really have to put up with in this is getting to a rest area and not having any spots available. So I know that can be a thing in real life to where you get to a rest area and there's no spot available for you to park.
Kind of like when you travel to the city, and it's like, ah, oh, we'll just get a hotel room here. And they start driving around, it's like, oh no, we're booked. We're booked. We're booked. Ah, it's a Chevron, huh? Where are... Sorry, I'm looking for... I was like, okay. You're saying that there's fuel here, and I'm looking like, where is the indicator that tells me where I, got, I can fuel up? Uh, we'll just park here, and we'll... When we scoot out in the morning... We'll pull straight ahead and fuel on up there. You gonna ding for me? Let me know. Oh, wow. Uh, was it that narrow? There we go. It's gotta be right here. Yep, press the following key to rest, but we'll do that next episode. Uh, let's just jump out here. Not the greatest parking jobs, but you know what? It'll do, donkey. It'll do. Uh, yep, we'll gas up on the way out. And like I said, we got about another hour and a half, two hours to get to wherever we're going. I forgot where we're going. Anyways, uh, there's a couple things I did want to check on. One that we always do, driver manager. Don't have to check on my drivers too much because, well, um, they're all got four points in the long distance hauling. So they're all set. Uh, but they're all sleeping except for one. But he's got 10 hours left in his clock. Uh, he's going from Alamosa, New Mexico to Tacoma, Washington. So that should pay kind of decent. Rally to Alamosa, 56 hours. She's not going to be there tomorrow. 39 hours too long, 34 hours not, and 42. And now even she's starting to take longer loads. Um, I'm kind of glad she finally got her fourth point in because now she can get points into others and she can, has more options. Um... But yeah, it looks like maybe one, possibly two loads uh, will get uh, done by next episode. So not much cash coming in uh, other than what I'm bringing in. The other thing I didn't want to, well, there's a couple of things I want to check, is truck manager. So the truck that we are driving, uh, right here, I was like, where the heck is it? Uh, the truck that we are driving... So I was, I was close, I think it was last episode, so we must have about 10,000 miles on it. We do uh, 10,668 miles on the truck, so not a whole lot. Okay, so now we want to go to Garage Manager. And just to confirm this, if I were to upgrade a small garage... Yep, yeah, so it is 100,000. Um, the tiny garage, if I were to upgrade the tiny garage to a small garage, it's only 90,000. So, yeah, buying a new garage isn't going to cost me 90000 but to upgrade it for two more slots is going to... Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know. We'll just go ahead and buy a new garage at that point, wherever it may be. But that's that's a ways down the road because, like I said, I'm not going to bother buying the garage until I can start putting a truck in it, which means we need roughly about $210,000 at the time. But the next step is trading this truck in. And like I said... Uh, once we get about fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars in our bank account, we'll, we will go ahead and do that. But um, that may be like maybe three more episodes or so, and we'll have the you know we'll trade in this Volvo truck and get whatever we're getting, and we're gonna have to live with that truck for a while because definitely want to get another garage going. Slowly put some drivers in there and just start making some more cash. But that is gonna do it for today, guys. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching. As always, I'll catch you again right here in American Truck Simulator with. Realistic economy, and I'm tired. But until then, have a good one.